uh, Anunnaki jumper ship called the Crystal City. It was actually built on Earth in Atlantis, and they used it to transport gold and precious minerals to Nibiru from Earth. When it returned, it's going to land in Colorado on Emerald Lake. That's the end of the Yellow Brick Road. This but it's, it's parked right now in Antarctica. And they have flown it over the land several times, and it has been recorded, and people have seen it. And it's all on TikTok, but people think it's a, a what's that? That's the Project Blue Bean. Uh -huh. They think that it's a government projected. It's not. It's, it's really here. But it's parked in Antarctica. And the reason it's parked in Antarctica because people don't commonly visit Antarctica because of the climate, not because of the restrictions. It's the same as traveling anywhere else in the world with the same restrictions. You just need your passport and your... Um, security clearance to fly on the airplane or to ride on the ship. But most people don't have that kind of money to take a trip to freeze their balls off. <laughs> but when they was asking for Larry Hoover, if you go back and you remember, they was I was telling people they was asking for Larry Hoover, they kept sending them all of the billionaires like that was going to change their perspective on who we were on the earth. And they told him, don't you bring your motherfucking ass back down here with this bullshit no more, or you're going to have consequences and repercussions like you in the movie Life, trying to take somebody cornbread. <laughs> they all went down there, Bezos, uh, what's that motherfucker, Elon, all of them went down there talking about they was coming to represent Earth. And they's like they not the ones that the Earth people sent them. They not the chiefs that's agreed to. You can't you can't come do no negotiations on nobody's behalf. There's a whole bunch of people in Antarctica right now that ain't from Earth. It's called the Galactic Committee, right? This is when they not seated at they seat in the Galactic Council offices. They are called the committee, the Galactic Committee. But when they in their office proper, they are the Galactic Council. They come down out of their seats very rarely, but nobody had ever beat in Lil in eons, and they wanted to see this shit they sell. Mm. So they down here watching social media like they from Earth. <laughs> so, so this is uh, Cliff ask a question. Is it the city in the sky that comes through the clouds? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They filmed it in um, Argentina. They filmed it in Florida. And they filmed it over Nevada. Yeah. They got mm. more than one jumper ship, too. Some of them not made the same. But the Crystal City is unmistakable. So I'm going to ask you one. I know you got a good ride. So everybody, whenever you do an interview, everybody want to talk to you all night because you got so much information and we all want to suck it up. It's like, just keep giving, giving, giving. We just want to keep going all night. But I want to ask you about um, Cecil Rhodes or Cecil Rose Rhodes. Cecil Rhodes was, uh, uh, he was operating under uh, King Leopold's command. And he was uh, a, a military commander that settled in the Congo. Uh, he was a staunch white supremacist, as in he, he knew who was controlling everything from behind, and he was doing a bidding when he went into the Congo. Wow. Wow. Ooh, this so much. Oh, one more thing. I know I keep saying, okay, one more thing, but the red and blue Kachina. Those are uh, prophecies of the Hopi. Mm -hmm. And we looking for it to be stars in the sky, but it's people on the ground. It's the blood, air, 
on the mother line is the red kachina. In the blood air on the father line is the blue kachina. The kachina dolls is the representation of the um, air as a child. They represent them with colors and they dress them up like baby dolls. Those are reminders. Just reminders. It's always good to have you on the platform. You know, this is home for you, brother. This home, man. This yes, home, sir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, we be having a ball. Me and you be having. We be having oh, too yeah. much fun to be thinking. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You know, Bo Bobby Hemming used to say that's how it's supposed to be. Bobby Hemming used to say you're supposed to be having a good time. Yeah, that's the that's when you're teaching for real. When you ain't trying to indoctrinate. Yeah. When you indoct indoctrinating is a military formula. Mm. So we in the military occupation of a Roman government, mm. which is the Catholic Church. Mm. Mm. They, the, the biggest deception Rome ever played was to tell you they failed. They didn't fall. They just changed their clothes. Ooh. Ooh, this is the continuation. We've got to remember, Rome is the continuation of ancient Babylon. They What's told us that? Babylon fell, but they they religious books tell you that Babylon keep changing its name. When you say Babylon, you mean Samaria? Babylon. Babylon is a neighboring uh, uh, civilization to Samaria. They related. <clears throat> let's, let, let's start like this, uh, Rod. So this, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a real good one. And I'm gonna get this right. Matter of fact, let me pull my notebook out now because when Rod is talking, I got to be taking notes. I got my notebook. <laughs> notes when Rod is talking. So, Rod, so check this out. So, you know, before, we, you know, we'll, we'll touch on that later. We'll wait till uh, more people get in the room. We'll, we'll touch on. We'll touch on Trump a little later on. Let's get to let's get let's get to business. It's, um, inevitable, it's inevitable that that come back up. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Rod, so uh, what sparked this conversation tonight, um, Denzel Washington, they got a, a commercial with Denzel Washington, a brother, and he's in a new Gladiator movie. So people are like, oh, shit, a brother in a Gladiator movie in ancient Rome. Um, you don't hear a lot of uh, people talk about the black presidents, and we're going to get into these terms black. We're going to get into what's more around, what's black around. Etruscans, what term was around to describe melanated? We're going to get into all of that at that time period. Not now, but at that time period. We're getting into that. But people are very excited to see Denzel play this role in Gladiator 2. I don't know what role he's playing, but people are just happy to see a black man on film in an epic movie such as Gladiator 2. So I said, I've talked to you extensively about ancient history, ancient Kemet. You've talked to me about Alexander the Great, Rome, Greece. Uh, Sumeria. I mean, you talk to me, you, you go way back and you go modern. So I said, Rod would be the perfect brother to talk to about this. Uh, let's have this conversation in terms of ancient Rome. All right, we got Kemet. You talked about Kemet. You talked about this great war that happened. You talked about, um, we've talked about the Moors in Europe. We're trying to get the chronology of all of this. So when does, when does black people these, this, this Roman Empire. Kemet falls and then Rome, this Roman Empire rises. How, how does this happen? Let's go back. What okay. happened to Rome to be so great? Rome didn't conquer uh, Egypt. Greece did. Greece. Right. Remember, they named Alexandria after Alexander the Fate. Yes. Right. And Rome conquered Greece uh -huh. with the same individual at the same time. Wait, wait. Greece conquered Kemet and then Rome conquered Greece. With the same individual at the same time. I'm gonna let that I'm gonna let that marinate for a second. You got Alexander that. the Great was a it was a plant. He was a, a Roman plant. Yeah. <clears throat> he was an Etruscan. Uh-huh. Um Black from, he, well, he was melanated, but when we say black, that's a more modern term. Modern term. Say, say you said black is a modern term. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We didn't call people by skin color back then. 
We call them by the lineage tribal affiliations. This is why you call to this day, you call Jews, Jews. They're not called Jews because of the area they from. They call Jews because who they descend from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the from Judah, who was the son of Jacob. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Judah is the one who receives the final inheritance because the rest of the kids didn't listen to their daddy. Mm -hmm. So the remnant, according to their text, is Dan and Judah. Dan literally mean judge. Judah is the adjudicators. Takes us back to John Wick. Mm -hmm. Your court system is, is set up right in the book of Leviticus. Mm -hmm. This was done by the Levites. How do you know that? Because this in the book of the Levites, that's what Leviticus is. Mm -hmm. So they system is levies, which is another way of saying Levi. In liens, which is the anagram for their sky daddy, Yahweh Enlil. So when they came in, they used Alexander. Remember, Alexander is the son of Zeus. Zeus is the uh, Roman name or the Greek name for Enlil. Okay. Right? So so Alexander is the son of Enlil. I got to go out and come back in. I can't hear you. My mom. This is when they took the Roman Empire conquered Greece. They didn't put Rome first to trick you. It became known after Alexander infiltrated Greece on behalf of Rome as the Greco-Roman Empire. Mm hmm Right. We still follow what's called Hellenism. Right. And Hellenism is Greek feminine culture. Roman is homosexual, false masculine culture, patriarchs. Mm -hmm. Right. So when the patriarchs took over, this is exactly how you know when they did it and what guy they replaced. In Greece, Helen whom the Hellenistic culture was named after was a woman. In the priestesses of the Oracle priests of Delphi, she would have been called Medu Sa. 10 Frank priestesses of the Sa priestesses. Right? Medu is the rank number 10, which is the highest rank. They didn't go from one to t um, 10. I mean, for, yeah, they didn't go from 10 to one for the best. They went from one to 10. We even use it today when we rate women because it's a feminine ranking system. It's not a masculine ranking system. Mm -hmm. So when we say, what is she? She a dime piece. Mm -hmm. We know then she got the mind, she got the body, and she got the face. Mm -hmm. And the swagger. She a perfect 10. Right? So that's Medu in Hemetic. Right, 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 right. Sa is the priest. Now, when you put them together, they told you that some guy chopped off a lady named Medusa's head. Remember that story? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the um, Babylonian culture, when you replace the guy that was before you, you destroy their face. You destroy their head. That's called the beheading of a god. Okay. It's not literal. It's the replacing of the god whose reign you interrupted when you conquered. So mm -hmm. when they get to Greece, when you look up the god Helen in Rome, Greece was feminine. Rome is masculine. Now Helen becomes a man. The god has been successfully beheaded. This is the story of the fall of Cleopatra, right? Cleopatra was the one sitting on the earth sacerdotal seat at the time of her pharaonic reign. And Rome seduced her. They didn't um, use military force to overthrow her because she, she would have been able to rally too much support. So they seduced her with Mark Anthony and um, 
Um, I forgot the other guy's name. I, I can always get their names mixed up. But anyway, she, she was she was in this love triangle, right? Trying to fight to keep the matriarchy in power, knowing that these patriarchs was going to find a way, and they eventually said she killed herself. This is contemporary with your Jesus story, by the way. Mm. Jesus in Greek is spelled I-E-S-O-U-S, -S, and the English rendition is I-S-I-S. -I -S. But they told us it was J-E-S-U-S. Mm-hmm. Right, because they turned the I into a J because they books say I will make you fisher of men. It became the hook on the hook and the flail of the Pharaoh. Mm. And then they changed, they gave it the same phonetic um sound as the G. You didn't need a J. Mm. The Semitic languages had the the gin, but in the uh, Egyptian is the only place where there was a sound equivalent to the J, but it can still be translated as a G, which is the, the snake, right? So when they um, get done replacing Cleopatra, remember the Bible was not assembled to 325 AD. The Cleopatra was living in the contemporary time with the person they call Jesus. Jesus in Greek is Isis. When you go to the Strong's Concordance and you look up Jesus, it's going to spell it I-E-S-O-U-S. -S. Mm -hmm. Then you use the grammar pronunciation key because vowels, it changes the pronunciation of the consonant. In the vowel that either follow or proceed, depending on if the vowel is following or preceding the consonant. So the I cancels out the E, but it makes the S sound <clears throat> go hard on the S, and the O is merged as one vowel with the U that gives us the O sound. And then it makes the S at the tail go hard, S. So the proper pronunciation of the Greek name Jesus in English would be Isis, right? This is all part of the Roman construct. We reconstructing what they call the great um, Babylonian empires that started with the head of gold and the breastplate of brass and all the way down to the feet of iron and clay. You strike the foundation and you bring down all of the all that it ever stood for. The foundation of the fraud is the usurpation of the feminine with the uh, with the feminine masculine, which is homosexual, which is romance, which is Roman customs and traditions that's passed on through the Etruscans to defile the princes to make them unfit to rule. They sexually assault the males as youth. So when they begin to tap into their chakra system, the root chakra being shattered sends a mixed message to the crown chakra, which causes a condition that we call in the DMSB manual schizophrenia, paranoid delusions, multiple personality. It's, it's a shattered oracle is what it used to be called. Right. And this is why all of the Roman emperors was hardcore homosexuals, because they was all trying to make the next male unfit to rule, as in the case of Caligula and his uncle. You with me, Rich? Yeah, man, I'm 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 I'm, I'm listening, man. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. All this stuff is in a combination of historical texts in um, mythological literature. But the, because of the scrambled egg effect, where they took the story, which is called the holy drama, and they altered it so that it's just enough of your memory will make you attached to that doctrine. Because remember, we under several, well, we coming out of several different spells of sleep. The Sumerians put us in the spell of Kingu with somebody named Humbaba. 
And the priests in Egypt put us under something called the Amen spell. That's why you put Amen behind all your prayers to keep your God self sleep so that your Lord self can wander around in darkness. And then we have what's called the George Washington Conjure, which is another blood. All these are blood ritual spells used to put us in a stupor so that they can um, continuously rule over us. But once we discover how it works, it no longer has effect and it frees the mind. And the free the mind is to free the soul. There you go. <laughs> Rod, you said something earlier. Oh, well, you know what? I'm gonna go into that later. But um, when we look at Denzel, mm -hmm. who does Denzel represent in antiquity? Is he a good guy? 